Let's take a look at the stick. Uh, the stick we use comes from the Kali and Escrima training that we've had. Uh, the one I'm using today is going to be this bright red plastic stick. It makes it real easy for the camera to pick up. It's also hollow so that it doesn't hurt kids if we hit them with it on accident. But uh, the real big thing is if you want to get your own, you can order them on Amazon. You can get really nice rattan or even hardwood ones. They're pretty expensive. You could literally just walk out into the forest and find yourself a stick. That's why we chose sticks and stabs as the very first weapon. You can find them anywhere. Uh, you could probably even find one in your broom closet, an old bro broken broomstick, you can cut it down. Go to Home Depot, you can get a piece of dowling really cheap there too. Uh, if you are wanting something more that you can use for self-defense, you can certainly get really nice polypropylene plastic ones that you'll buy once and never have to replace because they're practically indestructible. When you are selecting your stick, the big thing you're looking at is the length of it. You want it to go from the armpit all the way out to the tip of your middle finger as you hold your hand out to the side. This one's pretty much the perfect length for me. Uh, if you're uh, getting one of these for a kid, you might want to make it a little bit longer because obviously kids' arms grow a lot quicker. So in this case, when you're holding it, you want to make sure that you got a little bit of space down at the bottom, enough space that you can reach up and grab it on the other end. A lot of people want to grab it all the way down from the end because that does certainly give you more length to the weapon side of the stick, but you lose a lot of leverage out of this. Also, if I'm gripping up a little bit higher, this becomes a tool itself. My opponent gets too close for me to effectively hit him with this part of the stick. I can hit him with the butt part of the stick. I can even use it for grabbing a hold of wrists or grabbing a hold of uh, necks and being able to grapple and move people around. Uh, as I'm holding it in my stance, I don't want to be squared up to my opponent because if they've got a knife or a stick, it can go directly into vital organs. So my heart, that's the most important part in my upper body. I want to keep away from my opponent. So I'm going to stand with my left foot back, almost like an L stance. That left hand is going to come up to my chest. And you'll notice when it comes here, it provides a little bit of extra uh, distance. If I get stabbed, that has got to go through my arm, through my rib cage, and then into my heart. But then I keep that shoulder turned backwards. So now it's at an angle. The weapon hand, I'm going to hold in front of me. This is going to get it closer to my opponent. And I'm going to point the tip of it right at my opponent's nose. Alternatively, if they are starting to get in closer to you, you can switch and put your dominant foot back. That will give you a lot more power to be able to swing this with, but it's already a force multiplier itself. You don't need as much power as you need speed and accuracy. And the closer it is to your opponent, the bigger your deflection range is when you're blocking with it. Our first weapon movement is going to be a downward circle. I'm going to start this from a typical fighting stance, but I'm going to let the stick rest on my shoulder. This is a good position where your muscles aren't going to get tired, but it's still here to be able to come up and block or be able to strike if I need to, which is where the first motion is going to come in. I'm going to lift it from my shoulder to point it straight up. I'm then going to point it forward. You'll notice my palm rotated face up towards the roof. From there, I'm going to point it down and point my pinky up. Then I'm going to point the stick back and then bring it back to my shoulder. So it should make one full circle all the way back to here. Let's try five of these. I lift it up. I let gravity take over. One, two, three, four, five. That's an outside circle because it's going to the outside of my body. We're also going to do that as a downward inside circle. So this time it's going to drop forward, but I'm going to point it down to the floor and back next to this hip and then up to the ceiling. Again, I just lift it. I can either be lifting it from this shoulder or if I have it over here, I can just lift it from that shoulder and then I let gravity take over. Let's try five of these. Ready? One, two, three, four, five. This is a really good combo to be able to go from here and be able to strike somebody on the head. If they move, you can come back on the other side, which brings us to our next movement. If I do a circle on the outside and then I follow it with a circle on the inside, what we end up with is a figure eight. I'm gonna start the figure eight from the outside. I'm gonna swing it back down next to my hip. I want it close to my body. 
if we were in the jungle right now, I wouldn't want this swinging out wildly because it's going to get tangled up in the vines. I want to try to keep the stick as close to my body as possible. So same thing, I'm going to let gravity do the work. I bring the stick out in front of me and then I let the stick drop down to one side, down to the other side. Let's try five. Ready? Go. One, two, three, four, five. Notice at the end we can speed it up. This is a really good exercise to just help get your wrists lean, uh, limbered up. If you feel like it's all clunky, come back to these wrist stretches we did in our warm-up at this belt. The more flexible your wrists are, the easier it is going to be to move the stick. The next movement with the stick is going to be an upward circle. So in this case, I'm going to start from the same position with it resting on my shoulder. Difference is I don't necessarily have to lift the stick away from the shoulder first. In this case, I could just let it roll off the shoulder because that's in essence what I want is for gravity to now pull the stick backwards. From there, it pulls back to point next to my ear. It's going to go right next to my hip and point next to my toe. Remember, we want to keep this nice and close to the body back here so it doesn't get tangled up or grabbed from us. Once it's there, I'm going to point at my opponent's foot, then I'm going to point up to their, their nose. That's going to make it that full circle. Let's try five of these. Keep this other hand in nice and close. Ready? One, pointing backwards. Two, three, four, five. And you want to get this really comfortable where you can get it going fast and relaxed so that uh, you can get it moving in different directions if you need to. If you're having problems with that, go back and stretch out your wrist a little bit more. Process exercise more. You will gain wrist flexibility. Going to switch this now coming over here onto the inside. So it's on my shoulder in the resting position. I'm going to have to lift it up away from my face because I don't want to take my head off, right? I lift it up and again, I let gravity pull it backwards next to my ear, down to my hip, and I want to point it next to my foot. Then I'm going to point at my opponent's foot, then lift it up to their nose. That's the circle it's going to make. Again, since I'm going this way, I might hit my arm, so you want to make sure you keep that in close to you. Let's try five of them. Ready? One, pointing back, down, forward, up, two, three, four, five. And again, this side's going to feel a little awkward because of the way the wrist moves, but you want to be able to get it comfortable where you can do it fast. So now if I combine the motion of the outside upward circle and the inside upward circle, what I get is an upward figure eight. So let's try some of these. The path, I'm going to point next to my ear, down next to my foot, and then back up. Then I'm going to point to my opposite ear, point to my other foot, and then back up. Remembering to lead with the edge of the knuckles. Let's try five of these. Ready? One, pointing back next to the right ear, then back next to the left ear. Two, right ear, left ear. Three, four, five. And again, you want to get really comfortable where you can do this fast and uh, be able to change your directions, being able to go from an upward circle back to a downward circle to change the sideways if you need to. The next movement we call a helicopter. This exercise is really good for wrist flexibility. So if you're having a hard time with any of your figure eights or any of your circles, Come back to this helicopter drill and it's going to help you gain a lot of the flexibility you're going to need. Here's why we call it helicopter. Uh, I'm going to lift it above my head. Notice how I've got the bottom, the pommel side of it, pointing towards my opponent. This technique, I'm going to smack them on the left and the right side of the ear, both in the same movement. To do that slow, I want you to watch my elbow. I pull the elbow across my face. That rotates the stick around so I can swing to the side. If my opponent's right here and I can only swing this far, I'm not going to do any damage. I need to pull that wrist and that shoulder over so that I can strike through my opponent. From there, as I go the other way, the elbow is the first thing that moves. The elbow moves and the rest of the hand twists around behind it so it can strike on the opposite side. Let's try five of these. Ready? One. Bring it back to point forward. Two. Bring it back to point forward. Three. 
four, five. Now, besides that, you can also do these going in front of you. This is really good for a low parry if they're coming in at you really hot. So from here, I'm gonna point the stick at my opponent's nose, and I'm still doing the movement from the elbow. The elbow lifts up and points to the outside. That's what's gonna bring the stick down. The elbow's then gonna point down and then pull to the inside so that I can rotate the wrist over to get down. Let's try five of these, ready? One. Bring it back up. Two. Bring it back up. Three. Four. Now, once you're comfortable with all of these movements, you wanna practice it on the left side too. Make sure you learn it on the right side first though. If you're left-handed, you do it backwards. You start learning on the left hand, later go back to focus on the right hand. The key is once your dominant hand understands it, the less dominant hand will understand it easier. The next movements we're going to learn are associated with blocking with the stick. You'll notice that the blocks for the stick are very similar to the blocks with the hand. So the first thing, as soon as I feel threatened, I want to be able to bring the stick from here out to in front of me. The closer my weapon is to uh, my opponent, the more it creates a shield for me that they have to get around to get to me. So for the high block, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to let the tip of the stick drop. That's going to let gravity do its work and lift this side up. From there, I want to take it from the shoulder and push in an upward direction. I don't want to push straight up above my head because then it's going to slide off and their stick is still going to hit me. I'm going to push up and out in front of me. And when I'm done, I'm going to bring it back to this neutral position in case they need to move it another direction. Let's try five of those with the high block. Ready? One, turn it flat, press up and in front. Two, three. block we then have a downward block which is going to work very much the same way the stick is going to turn level but then I'm going to pull it in and I'm going to push down in front of me this is going to intercept a strike or a kick maybe that's coming up towards me towards my groin so let's try five of these ready one turn it flat pull in push down two three four five key from there, we have our inside and our outside block, very much like we do with our Taekwondo. I want to make sure that as I start the block, I bring it next to my ear. I want to gain some momentum that I can use to bring it back to the side. Uh, if I imagine a box in front of me, here's the top of the box. Here's the bottom of the box. I'm now going to go for the sides of the box. Notice how I've got the stick straight up and down. So let's try five of these. From here, I'm going to go for the outside block first. I'm going to bring it next to my shoulder, and I'm going to push it out to the side. Two, shoulder, out. Remember to breathe. Three, four, five, ki As I do the inside block, same thing. I'm going to retract the stick a little bit so I can push it across to my body. Let's try five of those. Ready? One, two, Remember to breathe, that's gonna give you strength in your core. Three, four, five, ki From there, we actually have two low blocks. We have a low outside block and a low inside block. For the most part, gravity does the work getting the stick there. You just have to let it take over. Let's do the low outside block first. I wanna again make sure I've got this hand nice and close. The stick's out in front of me. Going down and then out. Let's try five, ready? One, two, three, four, five, ki As I go the opposite way, I'm just going to let the stick drop to the outside first, and then I'm going to bring it across. It can even drop straight down and then across, but the important thing is notice, either way I do it, the rotation of my elbow is what gives the power to the stick so it's solid. Let's try five of these. Ready? One, point it down and then across. Two, remember to breathe. Three, four, five, ki Now we have two blocks that are supported for an extra big strike, like somebody's coming in at us with two hands. 
The first one is what's called the roof block. Uh, I'm going to show you this roof block coming in here from this angle. I put one elbow out and I'm going to put the stick resting right on the outside of the elbow. I want to make sure that I'm looking at my opponent right through this triangle, not through this side, because now if they hit it, it's going to roll off and hit my head. From the stick being in my front hand position, that elbow comes forward a little bit, which makes it nice to be able to grab a hold of them if I want to do a follow-up shot. So from here, the way it's going to work is my back hand folds over to my chest, my stick folds over to my uh, elbow, and my hand presses up so I can see underneath it. Let's try five of them. Ready? One. Remember to breathe. Two. Shh. Three. Shh. Four. Shh. Five. Key out. Uh. The last one is called the wing block. Now in the form I'm going to show you, we actually slip this around the back of the head to bring it over to my wing block. But we can do it right from this way too. All that happens is I drop this down so it's resting right on this uh, shelf on the edge of my shoulder. From there, I lift the elbow out in front of me and I'm trying to look at my opponent through this space right here. That's gonna give me protection for my head. Notice if I hold my head up straight, you can see my head on that side of the stick. My head's gonna get cut. I might have to turn my head here a little bit. I wanna make sure I got a nice clear view through this space. So let's try five of them, ready? One, come over the shoulder, lift the elbow. Two. Shh. Three. Shh. Four. Shh. Five. Kia. And then bring it back in front of you. Starting with the high and then the low. High outside, high inside. Low outside, low inside. Roof block and then a wing block. Now, if you can do them all together, you want to pick up the pace to where you can make it smooth between all of your blocks. And if you can do that, you want to be able to switch and be able to do the same blocking pattern with your left hand that you just did with your right hand. In the beginning, it's going to feel kind of weird on the left side, but you do want the left side to be just as smart. True, your dominant hand is going to usually be the one grabbing the tool but eventually you're gonna to have two tools. We'll show you how that works out later.